You're still looking good. I'm still feeling good. You know, I've got all your MyPillow products. Mattress topper, bed sheets, MyPillows, towels, slippers, blankets, sleepwear, dog Whoa, bed. whoa, Charles. Everyone now can get MyPillow products at huge discounts at MyPillow.com. That's right. Now's the time to go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to take advantage of our three-in-one sale. We're bringing you exciting new products, overstock specials, and closeout deals you won't find anywhere else. For example, when you buy one of our brand new MyPillow 2.0s, you get another one absolutely free. And with our overstock sale, you save 50% on our luxurious Giza Dream bed sheets. That's as low as $29.99 for the best sheets ever. And with our biggest closeout special, you get our all-season slippers for only $35 or our sandals and slides for just $25. Quantities are limited, and once they're gone, they're gone. You asked, and we listened. We've taken your suggestions, and we've made our already amazing Perkel bed sheets even better. As a thank you, we're bringing these to you for as low as $24.98 with your promo code. And our new line of Perkel bed sheets include everything you loved about our original sheets. Lightweight, durable, breathable, and they sleep cool and crisp. But now, because of you, they're made with 100% long staple cotton and the highest thread count to date. These sheets are softer and more durable than ever before. Plus, they come in all these new colors and styles. And you'll be getting five-star luxury sheets delivered directly to your front door for as low as $24.98. Not only that, they come with our 10-year warranty and the 60-day money-back guarantee. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen now. Use your promo code to save 50% or more. That's as low as $24.98. This introductory offer won't last long, so please order now. Throughout the world, pro-Palestinian protesters are taking over the streets. These protesters are spewing anti-Semitic rhetoric that's even finding its way into countries like the UK. But very few politicians are willing to call it out. The UK's Home Secretary, Suela Braverman, isn't afraid. She referred to the so-called protests as hate marches. She even is calling out the bad actors that are also behind these so-called pro-Palestinian protests. Braverman added, we've seen now tens of thousands of people taking to the streets following the massacre of Jewish people. The single loss of Jewish life since the, the single largest loss of Jewish life since the Holocaust, chanting for the erasure of Israel from the map. To my mind, there's only one way to describe these marches. They are hate marches. Now, the secretary is one of the few British politicians calling out these hateful protesters. And now she's being bashed, of course, for doing just that. Join us to discuss what it's like to be attacked for spewing the truth as a man with plenty of experience on that. Joining us is journalist and filmmaker Tommy Robinson. Uh, Tommy, thank you so much for being here. Uh, the secretary is being attacked for, you know, being honest. From your perspective, do I, I just want to hear what do you think about these pro-Palestinian protests in the UK? Well, many of the times they're actually pro-Hamas protests, and they're making that very evident and clear anyway, yeah. not just pro-Palestinian. They're very clear about it. We have now seen calls for jihad at demonstrations, demonstrations organised by Hizbut Tahir. Hizbut Tahir are a proscribed terrorist organisation in many countries. Funnily enough, most of the Arab countries have them proscribed because they know what their mindset is. Whilst their countries prescribe these terrorist organisations, we let them set up bases. Whilst their countries refuse Palestinian refugees, our politicians are crying out for Palestinian refugees. Whilst Arab nations actually understand the danger of allowing this mindset to flourish, our weak, cowardly politicians are, are doing the exact opposite. So we have seen now speech after speech after speech coming out from mosques across our country, calling for holy war, calling for jihad. At the time when they're doing this, we've then seen the Metropolitan Police Force, such a dimitude, pathetic, weak police force, come out and say there's lots of different meanings to jihad. Like when these men are spouting, saying Islamic armies need to get involved and we need a jihad, our police force are trying to tell us that they mean an inner struggle. It's absolutely comical. It's embarrassing. Everything I've been silenced for for the last 15 years, I've warned our country what's going to happen. Do you know the sad state of affairs? 
There are many Jewish organisations in Britain. There are many Jewish media outlets in Britain who thought they could feed the crocodile in the hope that it wouldn't eat them. And right now it's roaring in its hundreds of thousands and coming for every single one of them. And many of them are now realising that the people they've aligned, aligned next to, whether it be in Britain or in America, many of your politicians have done exactly the same, tried cozying up next to the Islamists. And those Islamists, given one, if they had the power, would wipe every Jew off the face of the planet. People need to realise this isn't about Israel. This is about Jewish hatred and about hate, hating Jews. And that doesn't, that parts of it to do with Israel, but it's embedded within the Quran, it's embedded within the teachings of Islam, and that's exactly what we're seeing now. Do, do, are these groups actually having buyer's remorse? Is there really any self-reflection going on, do you think? Because I feel like if, if this is subsides, they'll just go back to the, the, the practices and the positions that they had prior to these protests. I'd, I'd say that it's totally mainstream. It's mainstream within the educa education system, the hatred of Israel and the hatred of Jews. And what you're seeing now is that the people who they originally would have said was the, the far right, it's coming from the far left. It's coming from the far left, and it's the alignment and the unholy alliance between the far left and the Islamists who combine together. But what you're witnessing on the streets of London should terrify everybody. When certain people, are, we, we say never again and people say never again, we actually mean it. Yeah, we actually mean it. They don't. And what's currently happening in the level of hatred that we're seeing spewed, we're seeing terror levels rising now. I, I just see yesterday our government have come out and said they expect another terrorist attack now. But this is all being encouraged. It's being encouraged by mainstream politicians. But m many of the people have high ranking positions within government and politics. And here, and here they are calling for the total annihilation of the only Jewish state in the world. There's over 55 Muslim nations. There's one Jewish nation. And they want to obliterate it from the river to the sea. And, that, and that's and yeah, what we're witnessing. And the problem is, many of us were demonised for calling out jihad. Many of us were demonised for understanding Islam. We get it. We understand how it works. We understand the Ummah. We understand the Muslim Brotherhood. We understand that it doesn't matter if it's a terrorist organisation like Hamas. Many of the Muslims will support them as their brothers. And at the moment, when you see the atrocities that happened, and at that moment, at that time, they decide to come out in their tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands to support the Palestinian cause. Um, yeah, I think everyone should be alarmed by it, terrified by it. And the main, the main thing is, it's not going to slow down. This is going to speed up. And you see, when people see a war in Palestine or in Israel, understand that's not a war there, OK? It's a war here. When the call goes for jihad, they're coming from everywhere, from all the Islamic nations. And we're only, I know the Muslim population, they say, is at 6% of the UK. This is just a number of demographics. This is an increase in demographics. Now, in, whether it be France, whether it be Germany, whether it be Sweden, when the first European political movement tried to deal with the spread of Islam and radical Islam and jihad and Sharia law, when they tried to do that, when the call comes for jihad, that's what we're going to witness on our streets. We're already witnessing our, on our streets now because of what's happening in Palestine and Israel. Uh, so, so, Tommy, you've been trying to give a voice to those people or, or those women that have, have been sexually assaulted uh, in the wake of the influx of uh, Muslim migrants. You're, you're about to release a new episode on Rumble uh, in which you confront an alleged uh, rapist. Here's the teaser for that. Let's, let's watch. There should have been hundreds who went to prison, not just 10, 12. Why have they got a target? A 60-year-old woman disabled? No one's going to help me. Even the police ain't going to help me. We're supposed to be safe where we are, and I'm even too scared to get out of the car or going to the shop. I beg the police to move me and protect me. There's only you that's offered to help them. You've impregnated a child. We need to ask you some questions. They're still, they're still raping the girls. They've, they've got girls. They've groomed as a child, and now they're selling them as an adult. And that's because they've got them hooked on drugs as a child. You dragged a 12-year-old girl and you raped her. You forcefully raped her with gangs of men. You forcefully raped a 12-year-old girl. You took her to the weekend and you raped her. What do you have to say? Watch this. This is going to go out on a documentary. You're a star. You're a star of episode five, Rape of Britain. Never going to get them sent to prison or anything no more because the police don't care. But me telling the world what they've done, that's enough. Tommy, who is that man you're confronting in, the, in this teaser? 
That man is a man who we have multiple girls that he has raped. He took a girl's virginity at 12 years old. Um, he terrorised, he's part of a gang that have terrorised the town of Telford. Just so people, people really need to understand the demographics here. These gangs have operated in every single town and city in the UK that has a Muslim population. We have done a five-part series so far in a town called Telford. In Telford, there are a thousand victims, five of them are dead. In that town, it only has a 1.7% Muslim population. So when you take the Muslim population, it's roughly three and a half thousand Muslims. Once you get rid of the women, you get rid of the under 16s and you get rid of the over 70s, there's approximately a thousand men. The police investigation have identified 200 of those men. 20% of the men in that town that have been raping kids. 20%. We're not talking about small numbers here. Yeah, They're the numbers we've got. So we, we go into Telford. We spent 12 to 18 months with the girls, the families. We get to know the families. And each episode, we tell those girls stories and their life stories. And then we find the perpetrators and the men. Now, at the police investigation, when they identified 200, we find out that only 11 have been charged. We ask the question why. In our investigation, we find corrupt police officers. Basically, the story of this episode is when a girl went to the police and gave witness statements, they purposely leave her in harm's way. Her family get attacked, her mother gets attacked, her, the houses are firebombed. All of this is happening at the same time the police are saying she's not in danger. The reason being that the case collapses, which is what they want. So we're still in a... They covered these crimes up for 30 years, but they're still covering them up now by leaving vulnerable women in vulnerable positions where then they do not have the protection and the safety that's, that, our, that our police and security services should be giving them. That's the, that's the episode of this. And the, the thing that we've done is if, if the men are not going to be, if they're not going to face justice, then everyone in their towns are going to know who they are and what they've done. And you've been going back and forth with uh, Andrew Tate, who is quite a controversial figure, and, and it goes viral all the time for his statements. Uh, and you were actually, which we talked about, it, it was early in its inception, but we talked about it the last time you were here. You do plan to debate Andrew Tate. That is now set for next month. The topic, of course, is Islam. So tell us, when and where can we all go watch this debate? Because I can't miss this. The topic, the topic actually will be a long form discussion of a podcast. I know Andrew Tate and I knew Andrew Tate before his conversion. I know him from Luton Town. We're both from the same town, insanely enough. Um, so we have lots of close friends that are, are friends. And I've, I've been out to Romania to see Andrew Tate many, uh, many years ago. Now, I want to speak to him about his life. I want to look at what's happened to him and also speak about his conversion as well to Islam. It's on the 22nd of November. It will be on Rumble. It will be live streamed. It'll also be on a platform of Mice Media as well. Um, but yeah, that's coming 22nd November. I'm looking forward to it because I'm looking forward to um, Andrew Tate is a very intelligent man. I know there's a lot of I've, I've saved. I faced a lot of backlash from my own supporters because when he was arrested, I stood up because certain things they were saying were lies. And I know they're lies. So I, I know Pete, I, my, my, one of my good friends lived with Andrew Tate in that house in Romania for two years. So I know lots of the things have gone on and, and what they say has gone on isn't entirely true. So I challenged the mainstream narrative on it. And I got a lot of backlash from my own supporters because he's converted to Islam. I am totally against his conversion to Islam. Um, I believe it's dangerous. Um, yeah, and I, but I am looking yeah. forward to having a, a long form discussion, debate, possibly clash on many issues. Well, you know, I, I'm looking forward to, to seeing it because I know it'll be very intriguing. It'll be passionate and compelling. And I think everyone in our audience will be uh, enjoying watching that. That'll be November the 22nd on Rumble, live streamed on Rumble. Thank you so much, Tommy. It's good to see you as always. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. It was good to talk. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, next, the trial to dismiss President Donald Trump from the ballot is the, in the state of Colorado is currently underway. And Mr. Mike Davis from the Article 3 Project joins us next to break down its bogus legal theory. My towels solved a problem that we've all had with towels. You go into the stores and they feel lotiony and soft, but then you get them home and they wind dry you. That's why I made my towels. They actually work, they're soft, and they absorb. And now I'm excited to announce two brand new lines of my towels. What makes them the best towels ever is they're now made with 100% long staple Shapir cotton. 
This is a combed ring spun cotton that makes my towels even softer and more absorbent than ever. And now you get a six piece set for an amazing introductory sale price as low as $29.98. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get my towels for only $29.98. Or you can get my designer premium line for just $20 more. Either way, you save 50% now on all my towels. They actually work. What a concept. This offer won't last long, so please order now. MyPillow.com